The economic recovery that wasn't. The latest terrible economic report from an alarmingly bad first quarter. This is Special Report. Good evening, I'm Brett Baer. The third time was definitely not the charm for the economic numbers in the first three months of the year. They have gone from poor to bad to worse. White House correspondent Wendell Gohler reports tonight on what this means for the economy going forward. The White House shrugged off the worst quarterly economic report since the president's first three months in office. I've often said to you that uh, we don't get too excited when these individual reports surprise on the upside, uh, and we don't get too exercised when they surprise on the downside. Uh, obviously, in this case, uh, you know, the latter is true. GDP fell to a negative 2.9 percent, almost three times the decline reported last month. Winter storms shut factories and kept Americans out of shopping malls and away from auto dealerships. The trade deficit turned out to be bigger than last month's estimate. For Republicans, though, the bad quarter wasn't an outlier. It was bad news for an economy that was already underperforming. The economy continues to struggle. The president has no plan for economic growth and won't push his party to act on uh, the good ideas that we've passed in a bipartisan fashion here in the House. Mr. Obama's aides note some economists already see signs of a rebound, including strong growth in manufacturing and auto sales this spring. But economist John Macon says it's hard to climb out of a minus 3% hole. If we get let's say numbers are in the two to three percent range over the next few quarters, it's going to be a growth year below one percent because uh, a minus three is really hard to overcome. One troubling element was the impact of Obamacare. The government expected an economic boost from more spending under the health care law and it got the opposite. Josh Ernest says that's a good thing. The growth in cost of our health care system was rapidly outstripping uh, even um, even regular inflation, uh, and that was having a terrible impact on our economy. But the numbers may also suggest the government misread the impact of Obamacare. One estimate indicates people who signed onto the marketplace exchanges have twice the serious health issues as those who kept their individual policies, and that suggests their premiums may rise next year. Today's GDP revision was actually the third estimate of the first quarter's performance. Back in April, the Commerce Department said the economy actually grew a tenth of a point. The final figure, a 2.9 percent decline, is about as bad a performance as we've ever seen in a quarter outside a recession. Brett? Wendell Goler live on the North Lawn. Wendell, thank you. Today's economic news did not seem to bother Wall Street. The Dow gained 49. The S&P 500 was up 9.5. The Nasdaq finished ahead 29. Let's talk a little more about the GDP number tonight. Fox Business News anchor Melissa Francis is in New York. Good evening, Melissa. What does this really mean? Well, there's this term that economists use that's called escape velocity. When an economy finally breaks out, you know, it stops the sputtering, the starting and stopping, and it really breaks out to a real recovery with sustained growth. Everyone thought that was going to happen this year. A lot of people, at least a lot of economists, certainly the government did. This pours cold water on that idea. So is there a sense really why this is happening? Well, a lot of it has to do with con consumer spending. I mean, Wendell mentioned that. And you can blame part of that on the weather, but you also look at the fact that we have very high unemployment. The jobs that people have gotten are not paying well. They're part-time jobs. If you do have a job, your wages are stagnant. So people don't have money in their pockets, and consumer spending is two-thirds of what fuels our economy. Could it mean we're headed back into a recession? There are some economists who are saying that that might be a little too severe. Um, there have been signs of life in the second quarter here. We've seen some good housing numbers. What it does mean is that the overall number for 2014 is not going to be anything like what the government and the Fed had estimated. Finally, Melissa, you know, a lot of people just don't understand the stock market. When you have bad news like this, why doesn't the stock market sell off on the bad news? Absolutely. There's really two reasons for that. I mean, one is that a lot of investors feel like this news is very much in the rearview mirror. We're almost through the second quarter, about to start the third. So news about the first quarter is really behind us. But it also means that the Fed is going to keep their foot on the gas, that they're going to keep printing money and making money very loose. That has fueled this run up in the stock market. And ironically, that has made those Fed policies have made the divide between rich and poor that much wider. Really interesting. Melissa, as always, thank you. Thanks.
Lawsuits are about as unusual here in Washington as expense account lunches. But the Speaker of the House says he will take legal action that is out of the ordinary. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel on what could end up being a huge battle involving all three branches of government. What we've seen uh, clearly over the last five years is uh, an effort to erode uh, the, the power of the legislative branch. So Speaker John Boehner says the House will sue President Obama for exceeding his constitutional authority. I believe uh, the president is not faithfully executing the laws of, of our country. And on behalf of the institution and our constitution, uh, standing up uh, uh, and, and fighting for this is in the best long-term interest of the Congress. Part of the frustration is the House has passed two bills trying to restrict the president's use of executive orders, but those measures haven't gone anywhere in Majority Leader Harry Reid's Senate. The top House Democrat Nancy Pelosi says this lawsuit is all trickery. I make of it a subterfuge. As I said, they're doing nothing here, and so they have to uh, give some aura of activity. Mr. Obama has recently issued executive orders directing the Department of Labor to offer gay couples family leave, raising the minimum wage for federal contractors and stopping deportations of children here illegally. A leading legal expert calls it a radical increase in presidential power. The president is now asserting a level of unilateral authority that dwarfs most of, if not all, of his predecessors. He is creating what I've called an uber presidency. White House officials say they'd prefer to work with Congress, but accuse Republicans of blocking efforts to help the middle class. Spokesman Josh Ernest says the Republicans don't have a case. The decisions that the president made were well within the scope of his uh, legal uh, authorities uh, as described by the Constitution as de and as described by the law. In a memo to House members, Boehner wrote, quote, for years Americans have watched with concern as President Barack Obama has declined to faithfully execute the laws of our country, ignoring some statutes completely, selectively enforcing others, and at times creating laws of his own. Boehner says he plans to bring a bill to the floor in July, but notes this lawsuit has its limits. This is not about impeachment. This is about his, his faithfully executing uh, the laws of our country. While three out of the past four presidents have issued more executive orders than Mr. Obama at this point, Boehner will sue on actions like tweaks to Obamacare that take away congressional power. Brett? Mike, a new allegation about Lois Lerner when she was at the IRS. That's right. The House Ways and Means Committee late today presented evidence that the IRS targeted a sitting United States senator. The committee presented email evidence showing former official Lois Lerner sought to have Iowa Republican Chuck Grassley referred to IRS colleagues for examination. Grassley received an invite to a speaking engagement, and the invitation somehow was sent to Lerner, who questioned if the group was paying his wife's travel and if he would report it as income. A top Ways and Means member offered this reaction. If Lois Lerner was actually uh, looking to target Senator Grassley, then that's just another example of the IRS being used by the administration as a political tool, a political weapon. And that's not what the IRS should be doing. I think it's pretty simple. It's called Chicago politics. While many of Lerner's emails are missing and under investigation, this email led to scrutiny of a senator. Brett? Mike Emanuel, live on the Hill. Mike, thank you. Well, first it was the IRS. Now the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, is also apparently dealing with missing emails. A Republican congressman says the EPA may have lost correspondence with an employee who ultimately disappeared. There is the suggestion the agency knew about the loss of records, but did not notify the National Archives until yesterday. Up next, the latest pronouncement from Iraq's leader has Secretary of State John Kerry scratching his head. First, here's what some of our Fox affiliates across the country are covering tonight. Fox 5 in Atlanta with the shocking new details in the case of a toddler who died after being left in a hot car. A law enforcement source tells the station someone accessed the work computer used by the father, Justin Ross Harris, to search for information about how long it would take for an animal to die in a hot car. Fox 13 in Salt Lake City with a federal appeals court ruling that states must allow gay couples to marry. The decision affects Utah and five other states. A separate ruling by another court struck down Indiana's same-sex marriage ban. And this is a live look at Providence, Rhode Island from WPRI. The big story there tonight, radio host Buddy Cianci is running for mayor again.
Cianci was mayor twice before and twice resigned following felony convictions. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.